All right, guys, let me show you something completely amazing. And I'm not talking about this little cool lever that opens up the back of the Mini. This is what I'm talking about. Can you believe it? Nathan, you fit. I certainly do, and you're gonna see more of this car coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. I love the original new Mini. It doesn't look like this, but it reminds you of this. And this is why this vehicle is interesting to some and scary to others. From the front end, you can see how high the hood is. Dude, I'm over 6'1 with the boots on. Look at this, that's how high the hood is. I mean, that's extraordinary. Aside from the headlights, everything else on the vehicle is like an oversized Mini, except look at the roof line and how it tapers downward. Roman mentioned the Evoke because he thinks this reminds him of it. I could see why, because of the roof. Otherwise, I don't necessarily agree with him. Nathan, an Evoke has three doors, a sloping roof line, and costs just, you know, over $40,000. This costs just under $40,000. People know. say it competes with the Juke. That has four doors and costs $25,000. No way, Evoke, man. Okay, you could say that. Yeah, I think it kind of competes with, oh, I don't know, a Jeep Grand Cherokee. <laughs> <laughs> At least cost-wise it does, especially the unlimited version. Yeah, well, personally speaking, I think WRX, uh, STI, and even that is much, much cheaper than this. But hey, folks, the all-wheel drive system in this is awesome, but there's very little ground clearance. Just yeah. so you know. Yeah, the Evoke does go off-road. This will not. Oh my, Nathan. Can you believe that we are in springtime in the Rocky Mountains and we're covered with, what, two feet of snow here? Yeah, it's the thing about Colorado. If you don't like the weather, wait a couple days. Just like our videos. <laughs> <laughs> wait That's one right. day. You wait one day and it changes. <laughs> but it's a good time to test the pacement because this one is the all four. Yeah, the all-wheel drive system in this car works remarkably well. We've actually taken it through some snow and through ice. Roman's done a lot of that, and so far so good, and it's got summer tires on it, basically. Yeah, I'm really impressed by how well it does when the traction is bad. I was thinking this would be like a go down ice because of the fat uh, tires, but I think Mini's done a great job in having the system appropriate power to the right wheel and keeping it on the road. I tried turning the traction control off when I was in some pretty deep snow, and it was pretty scary. <laughs> I bet it was. So there's a lot going on, and for the most part, it works. How about uh, in these twisties, Nathan? How's it feel? The car becomes much more attractive when you're inside of it. Everything changes. First of all, outward vision, especially out front, fantastic. Still, you have the big windows like the regular Mini. Not so much in the back, but that's so be it. It's fast, and around corners, you get to do what I love, which is you get to enter those corners slow, speed up, speed up, speed up, shoot out of them fast. While you're doing that, the steering feel is fairly good, but more importantly, at least with this car, it becomes a little heavier as you're going through it. So you're getting faster, the steering's getting heavier, and it's all proportionate. It all feels right. Now inside, the uh, Mini Cooper S Paceman is a hot mess. It's hot because, let's face it, it's sexy and cool and modern and chic, but it's a mess because ergonomically it's kind of hard to use and it's a funky mix of really nice plastics and really cheap plastics. And I have to tell you, this steering wheel, Mini has worked very hard to make a leather steering wheel feel plastic. That's quite an achievement. Nathan, you have to admit we are two very big guys. And surprisingly, <laughs> we sort of kind of fit in the back of this thing. Well, I mean, look at headroom. I'm 6'2", and with the sunroof, which is cool, by the way, the double sunroof, I really don't fit. How are you doing? I, my torso is taller than yours. You have freakishly long legs, and so my legs are okay, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not great headroom. It's better than the regular Mini, though, by far. Yeah, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your lifestyle, this car only comes with two seats in the back. There's no bench seat, so you're never gonna get more than four people in here.
Yeah, and there is this good little sport button. Yeah. That I just flicked down. Actually, it's a toggle switch. Yeah, it's a toggle switch. And it does hold revs a lot longer, and it does inject kind of another layer of life into this thing. Yeah, I mean, I wish we had the stick to use, because quite frankly, I've been told it's a completely different car, even more driver-centric. But with the automatic transmission, and you can move it over, and you also have paddle shifters, it works really well. And it does hold the gears nicely. It will go up to redline. Um, what I'm like, okay, I'm flipping it now, right? Going down to, uh, da, 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 let's see. You're in M4. Third yeah, M3. I'm in M3 now. Okay, third gear. Oh, yeah. That sounds good, doesn't it? That's a nice sound. I like that. So this is a Cooper S, which means that under the hood is now the ubiquitous 1.6 liter four cylinder that puts out 181 horsepower. It's turbocharged and it feeds all four wheels through an automatic six speed transmission. All right, give us some good juice, here we go. at all not bad at all this thing weighs 3200 pounds it ain't light so 0 to 60 7.77 seconds at high altitude that's not too bad Okay, now I've had the pleasure to drive this pacement all week and I have learned an important lesson. I'm going to demonstrate that. What you tend to do in this car is you tend to pull into very tight parking spaces because, well, it's very small. Nathan, I need you. Come on over here. Let me demonstrate what happens when you pull into a tight parking space. Great. Move over a little bit. A little forward. Uh, a little bit left. Left, left. Okay, face the camera. This is what happens. You pull into the tight parking space, you open the door and... Whoa! Dude! <laughs> now, Nathan's butt <laughs> were another car it would have a huge dent. These doors are enormous, Nathan. They are big. Hey. Yeah, and you know, it's uh, relatively heavy for how small it is, but at the same time, it doesn't feel that heavy. It's got a really low center of gravity, so when you're carving these corners, um, it goes where you point it. It certainly does. As I said, the steering is just optimum. It just has a wonderful, wonderful sense of feedback to it. And even though the steering wheel feels kind of plasticky, it is leather. <laughs> and the other great thing about this car is the brakes are really good. Oh yeah, yeah, we <laughs> definitely. It's one thing BMW and Mini know something about brakes. Yeah, yeah, that's where the it, BMW influence comes in the most, I think. Um, once again, the problem I have with this car is the fact that it costs almost $40,000. You can get a lot of other cars for that. And one of the things that you said you can get with it, obviously, is a WRX STI, which would have, oh gosh, 120 more horsepower. Yeah. That's a lot. It, it, yeah, but that's a boy racer, and from the inside, it's, it's still a Subaru. This is kind of a kitschy car. It's kind of a fun car. You can be youthful with it. And at the same time, you don't seem like you're the boy racer type person. Not that I care about that, but there are people out there who do care about it. You know what this thing is though? I'll tell you what it is. It is just a slightly effeminate WRX STI. How about that? <laughs> so what you're saying is that underneath it's wearing a thong. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, it's kind of heavy, so let's hope it's a bikini as opposed to a thong. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to... Okay, you guys know what I mean. You don't want to see everything. Yeah, uh, this... yeah. <laughs> So Nathan, it's a big mini on the TL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it. What do you give it? I'm between lease it and rent it, and that mostly has to do with the way it looks on the outside, but the minute I started driving it, I fell in love with it. It's such a great driving car, and it's unique, and it's different, and everything's great from the inside. So as long as you don't pass by a window, I say lease it. And I'm gonna give it a lease it as well, and I'll tell you why, because for the price of this car, which is just a tick under 40,000, if you wanted the sportiness, you can get yourself a GTI, mm -hmm. Volkswagen GTI, Golf. Yeah. And if you wanted the cuteness, you could at the same time also get 
a Fiat 500. You can get both cars and have two cars for the price of one Mini Cooper S Paceman. Yeah, it's a little pricey. As always, this is Roman and Nathan saying, see you next time in the fast lane car and thanks for watching. Now keep in mind, you're not gonna see a lot of my partner for a while because you're going where, Nathan? I'm going to China, baby. Why are you doing China? Well, I'm gonna cover the Shanghai Auto Show and I'm going to be going all over the country looking at really cool car things, I hope. So you're gonna bring back some cool reports? Oh yeah, you know it. All right, stay tuned for that. See you guys next time. Ciao. Mwah! All right, guys. Uh, here's the clutch. Here's the key. Clutch, Andre. I think that means key. He shoveled out. I'm gonna push again. And Andre's gonna slowly try to drive out of here so that the car does not slide into the creek and down the hill. All right, Andre, very slowly. I'm gonna try to give you a push. Hold on, let me get a good grab. Let me get a good. Okay, go for it. Go for it. Uh. Almost. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop. Oh, that made it worse. Nah. Yeah, I think we're good and proper stuff now. Nah. More, more shoveling. Hold on. We had it, and then we slid. <laughs>